Hey, hey, everybody, and a big hello to Erica, who rarely ever shows her face in public. Erica, welcome, welcome. Hello. <laughs> How is everything? Doing well, doing well. It's been a busy, busy week. <laughs> Well, uh, we, we chatted a little bit about it. I want to hear more details and put you on the spot. Tell me about uh, your, your in-theater in showing that you just had. So uh, Laird Jimenez, who runs the Weird Wednesday program here in Austin, um, he was kind enough to allow me to pick a movie for Weird Wednesday to promote the book. And so had a near sold out crowd to watch the Swedish action movie War Dog. And uh, it was last Wednesday, so it was two days before the book showed up. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, that sucked, like not having the books. But um, a lot of people seemed interested still in buying it. And so I, I made little things to hand out to folks since I knew I wasn't going to have them that day. So, um, But I think it went over well. Um, I did not vomit in front of people, which, you know, it. It's a worry. I get nervous in front of crowds. So, um, yeah, but it, I thought, I think it went really well and, uh, we might try to do it again down the road. So we'll see. Stan wants to know if those are boxes of books behind you right now. That's some of them. Um, that's overflow. <laughs> a thousand books is a lot y'all. So the rest are out in the dining room right now. So, uh, if you have not seen, we, we probably need to dive into, this incredible creation, The Sweetest Taboo, An Unapologetic Guide to Child Kills in Film. Uh, just, I don't even know where to start with this. Uh, obviously, it, it's a huge, huge achievement for you. Like, I think, how, when was the Indiegogo published? Was it January last year? Yeah. Okay, January so we're at 2023. <laughs> 15 months since yeah. it was announced publicly. Yeah. And it is it is so much better than I could have hoped for. Lots of lots of respect to Haunt Love who did the layout for it. Yeah. Uh, Justin's amazing. This book is something that uh, I think I got it in on Tuesday, and I have poured through as much as I possibly could already because there's something about it. the The layout makes you want to read more. He he killed this, this book. Yeah. Yeah. This this is you know his book as much as it is mine. Like it is what it is because of how he put it together. Like, you know, my snarky writing can only carry it so far. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, as soon as, you know, when I initially approached him, I, it was just for the cover art. Um, and then he talked about doing the whole thing. And I was like, holy shit, this is going to be a thing. <laughs> and, um, and I think that's why I was like super committed to getting it to look a certain way and, you know, making sure that, you know, it wasn't just going to be like cheap and flimsy or anything like that. Right. Like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to have to spend some of my own money here, which sucked. But in the end, I'm really happy with how it came out. The res um, reception that I've gotten makes me confident that I will break even. So I'm feeling okay with <laughs> that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, it, I've lived with the book for so long in PDF form and having it in your hands is, is surreal. And I, I haven't even had time to like really sit down and thumb through it myself, right. but it's also weird because I'm like, I know everything that's in there, but it's still different because it's very it, different. It, it's a physical copy. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm thrilled that it's, it's out there in the world now. It's been really nice seeing people sharing when they when they're getting their copies and um, yeah, I'm like my baby's out there. It's <laughs> it's so kid. neat. It's <laughs> so neat to see. Well, and that's honestly that is the main question. We already have somebody asking, what is the draw of seeing kids being killed in films? I mean, for me, it's a personal. Just like I think it's funny because I don't like kids but <laughs> <laughs> the the point of the book itself is a um let's call it an overreaction to the pendulum swing yeah. in our own reactions to films to trigger warnings to needing to have feel protected for everything and just having you know, 
thinking and, you know, just judging movies before we even have a chance to see them. And, and so I really just wanted to go to an extreme and it's like, I'm not going to write an academic, like thoughtful right. book about children being killed. I'm going to have fun with this book and I'm going to show people it's okay to enjoy really fucked up things in movies. Um, and we need to, you know, I don't want the pendulum to swing all the way back the other side. Like we need this, you know, still keep some things in check, but let's just get that right back in the middle where we can all just agree that not every movie and the content within is for everyone. And we don't need to judge other people for what they like to see in certain right. movies. And let's just leave it at that. I, I agree with all of that beyond that, uh, you know, on top of the pendulum swinging, it's one of those things where it is one of the most unexpected, hence the subtitle of the book. Like it's not something that when you're watching some, some random film that you think you're probably going to see a kid die in this, even if it's like a modern slasher, you're guessing probably not. They're probably not going to cross that line. Yeah. And honestly, you said it, you're not going to write an academic. It comes across as academic. It comes across no. as a tome of like something that we all can appreciate and love and it's so well done it's it's just perfect i mean some of the the write-ups are like two sentences ryan come on that's not academic that's like it, there is it's snark. you can be academic and not exhaustive you can also mm. be academic and snarky okay. there is a lot to learn in this book which is what <laughs> academic is um i will say freaking rad gifts too <laughs> uh obviously not everyone's getting one of these uh, oh my god is... the, there are so many bad people about that i am so sorry internet that i underestimated the power of wong but <laughs> it is so freaking great <laughs> uh and then on top of that a whole bunch of other goodies the my uh random alice sweet alice mask is in the front now but um it's it's such a perfect thing but you have been busy as shit since the last time you were on here. I mean, it's been since last March. Um, first off, let, let's go through some of these. Uh, Air 4444, Run and Kill. What did you do for this one? I did a video essay for that one. Actually, I I kind of I kind of bullied my way into that one. I basically <laughs> like messaged Sam and I was like, look, I know y'all are releasing Run and Kill. Uh, I got to be on that. And here is a video essay I put together. I know it's it's like a 15 minute essay, video essay, and 13 minutes of it is kids just getting wrecked. But that <laughs> one is actually a little bit academic because I do talk about, you know, why we see so many ki kid kills in Hong Kong movies and what the significance of that is. But I also had a lot of fun like putting the clips together for this because it's just like one after the other. Right. Uh, I don't have the vinegar syndrome titles. I know you've got a couple of those. You want to share some of the, I, I have them. They're just buried in the, the, the pile. You don't uh, have to done... lie about not supporting me, Ryan. It's fine. I'm a subscriber. I promise I got that. <laughs> uh, what do I got? Uh, so since the last time I was here, um, I have a, what do I have in this booklet? Uh, yes. Booklet essay in magic crystal. Um, that's all about Indiana Jones knockoffs. And then I have a, another booklet essay in Black Cat, uh, one and two. Right. That one is about uh, La Femme Nikita knockoffs. <laughs> and then I have a booklet essay in The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock. And that is about necrophilia in Italian horror films. Right and I think brand. I have the best. I think I'm not trying to like toot my own horn here, but I feel like I have the best essay title. So if we can add that to the shelf shock so I can get an award, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's called, it's called, are those maggots in your eyes? Or are you just happy to see me? Come on. It's a great title. And uh, I, I mean, I, I don't think I shared the actual details, but you were really freaking close to winning a shelf shock this year. Oh, that's nice. You were That's nice rather to close. Uh, but one that we haven't talked about yet uh, mm -hmm. is this one that just came out from Fun City. I'm going to show this title because this is the one you always say. So uh, what does this movie mean to you and what did you do for that? So I actually did a co-commentary with Chris O'Neill, who's been a guest on your show before as well. Um, and Bill Ackerman had approached me about doing the co-commentary with, with Chris. Um 
you know, cause I live in Texas and I'm from a different state. So I had a lot to say about Kathleen, the main character in it and her moving to Texas, um, actually as a teacher. And then when I moved to Texas, I was still teaching at the time. And, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it's, I, I think it's just one of the great rape revenge films and I'm really excited for people to, to discover it. And I think it's going to be on a lot of people's, um, discovery list this year. It's that good. It Just is a great release. Um, I, I, I'm really happy that you were able to be a part of it, especially for a title that you've been championing for ever. It, it's yeah. one that you've been talking about since the dawn of time. Um, you were also in, I don't think it was released yet last year. The uh, You were in the, not the Cat 3 box, but the, the Asian trilogy that Vinegar Syndrome did early last year too. Oh yeah, the Made in Hong Kong Volume yeah, One. That's yeah, the one, yeah, I had a booklet essay for the Demon's Baby on that. I, th yeah, okay. Time is. Whew, I didn't realize it'd been so long since I've been on here. I think I, I actually think I was on here to promote the Indiegogo <laughs> for the book, and yep. now I'm here with the book, and that's how long it's been. It's been 26 <laughs> years, guys. Um, the uh, wasn't the weren't you in the Spanish horror box set from last year too? Oh shit, that one too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. What did I do? Oh, I wrote about like the um, the werewolf one. My God, sorry, my brain. It's been a it, week. It, it's a good release. <laughs> I tell everybody to check that one out. Uh, it's one of my favorites. And um, one other, I don't have it yet. Uh, it's actually being shipped to me right now. Dream Stalker from Terrorvision. Let's get away from Vinegar Syndrome. You were on that one. Yeah. Uh, man, I, this, first off, I'm biased because it's a someone's favorite visual essay. This might be one of my favorite visual essays that we put out through us. So can you tell everybody what you did for that one? Because it's kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, so this one was actually a film that, not a film because it's SOV. This is a movie that uh, my co-host Lance and I from the podcast did together um and it's called all jocks are bastards and we basically just kind of give a recap of a lot of the jocks throughout horror movies and why we really hate them so much and um sort of that trope of them throughout um throughout horror films and it was a lot of fun to write and and um i'm just glad it's hopefully being well received. So that was a lot of fun to work on. And it was a dream because it was like, uh, you know, I wasn't going to do that without Lance because that was his pick for the podcast. So I was like, yeah, it was fun. There are at least two more projects that Eric has already done for someone's favorite that you can keep an eye out on those. I, I feel like we worked on those ages ago and they are somehow not released yet. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, knowing what I know, they, they are coming very, very soon. So we'll be talking about those soon. Um Let's get to some of the regular stuff, and then I'll go back to the book in a little bit. Uh, any recent pickups that isn't stuff with your name on it? Anything you want to share with everybody? I didn't bring a pile with me. Uh, <laughs> I have not. Where Well, so John and I are subscribers, so whatever is coming in Vinegar Syndrome um, this month, that's my that's my pickups. That, I'm I'm sorry. I got good choice. Every, everyone's <laughs> like, God, who am I having on here? Um, I, I have a I, pile of movies over here, people. I swear, I just didn't like. <laughs> I didn't buy anything recently. <laughs> I will share just a couple things. Okay. Uh, Cult Epics just did Tinto Brass titles on 4K, and uh, this frivolous Lola title we are giving away through the Physical Media Advocate. Uh, there's an issue that is dropping this weekend and this is going to be a giveaway you can read about that between the pages um third window is uh working with me on a couple things and adam from third window sent me the entire director's Ooh. club that they're doing uh right now these three that uh none of these have technically been released yet and somehow he has all three of them so <laughs> he sent me all three and uh yeah they they are going to be great just got them um, but really, the thing I'm most excited about, uh, in the chat, Mr. Stan Geezy, who's agreeing with you about uh, all jocks being bastards, uh, just wrote a new book called Facials, which is hilarious, uh, and it is a sketchbook that Stan made, and uh, it is astonishing. The work in here is so well done. Uh, I don't know if I should spoil it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to go... 
what page is it on? I think it's on 100, right, Stan? Uh, Stan sent me this with the message that says, turn to page 100. Uh, frequent appearer on the show, Mr. Jeremy Long, made the book. <laughs> uh, there it is. Everybody should check this out. Uh, this is going up on Amazon in the next week or two, I believe. He finally got approval for that. Uh, you can pick this up soon. You can check it out through Murrieta Press. Stan, thank you for this. An incredible work. It is it's a really, really fun book. It's so well done. Um, other than that, the only thing that I really wanted to say, I am shocked. And I know that you like at least a couple of his movies, so I don't think I'm going to feel too out of place saying this. Uh, Lars von Trier just got this release from Mubi. And Mubi, surprising, like with an incredible release, hard box, extra thick, comes with art cards, a booklet. I'll put those to the side. But this thing... Look how big this is. And I got this through Target, who basically just announced they're not selling anything in store for physical media starting soon. Um, but they will still be selling it online. So for now, we, we have a little bit of faith in them. But this release is so much better than expected. Like, Mubi has not had super high quality physical parts. They do pretty good with their discs. But this is like a really great package for... A, a good filmmaker. I'm glad they went that far. Um, yeah. Lars von Trier. Hell yeah. <laughs> good for you, movie. You gave him you gave him the release he deserved. Speaking of Lars von Trier, the first thing I looked up when I got your book is uh, the movie that I finally watched through for the first time this week. Uh, the House That Jack Built. Uh. And I was happy to see that you actually enjoyed a fairly modern movie. How do you feel about The House That Jack Built? I mean, I, I enjoy, here's the thing, me and modern movies, we don't get along very well, but there are certain directors and there's an announcement coming up later that, you know, I'm going to be like, yes, that's, you know, it's the yeah. whoops all bangers box set. <laughs> but, you know, Lars von Trier is one of the directors who like, he's very, He's very into himself, but I mean, I enjoy watching that in, in him. And so there's, I think it's just modern horror movies for the most part. Like, I'm just like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's my main, just like, no, I don't care anymore. He but, is, I, I would say he's earned being into himself a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. I'll give that to him. But um, yeah, I, there, I mean, there's a few and far between that I do like, but for the most part, it just, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> I understand. Uh, anything else that you have watched recently that you want to share? I've got two more that I'll share after you do. Um, you know, honestly, this whole week has been um, <laughs> commentaries. Like I've just been putting on commentaries in the background to listen to. Nice. So that's, you know, that's been nice trying to do a mix of like, classics like i listened to the commentary for the maltese falcon and and then i did pumpkin head so i'm all over the place um it didn't really like just sit down and watch anything um except for a hong kong movie called possessed because john and i had seen possessed two but we hadn't seen the first one and we have a video store here and we were there the other day and i was like oh they've got uh, possessed and possessed one or possessed two and we we should watch the first one so we did that and um he so i got that one and he got stalingrad so i think we're gonna watch that <laughs> this weekend you know feel good movie time nice uh I, i'll say i was very very pleasantly surprised how much i liked the house that jack built i'd seen the first half before and never finished it and watching the end i was like Oh, this is not the movie I started last time. <laughs> <laughs> really surprised the hell out of me. Um, I uh, want to share two other things. Uh, I watched, <laughs> I watched New York Ninja again. The the oh, Vinegar Syndrome release, their first VSP. Um, if you have never spent just a day putting on all of the stuff they give you on those discs, it is one of the best days that you can spend. All of the deleted scenes, all of the commentary from. Uh, Curtis, who was the the redirector for that, all of the like the voice talent talking, the comments, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it is so so well done. I absolutely love that entire package. 
Um, but one I want to share tonight, and I'm glad he's here in the chat. Uh, my friend Brian recommended I check out specifically a visual essay. And since it's Erica and I talking tonight, I really want to turn people onto this. So if you've not seen this, uh, Moment of Romance from mm -hmm. Radiance. This came out, oh, I think it was late last year. Uh, like very, very late last year, maybe. I, release dates are not a thing in my mind anymore. Um, I've not watched the movie yet. Uh, but I did put in the visual essay, which is essentially, how do they describe it? I think they say, uh, let's see, uh, Hong Kong cinema through a moment of romance. And this movie is from, gosh, what is it? 19, uh, 1990. And th the work that they do in this visual essay might be the best visual essay I've seen yet. Um, I, I definitely took some uh, inspiration for this uh, stuff that Will and I are working on literally tonight. Uh, and I'm, I'm taking like what I felt from that and putting that into our work. It is, it is one of the most exhaustive, really well-made visual essays that I have never been able to like put into visual aspects the way that I want to see these things. And it showed me a way to do that. And I highly, highly, highly recommend people checking this out. This is the type of visual essay that I really hope wins something like a Shelf Shock Rewind Award for because it's that good. But it's also one of those things that I feel like people tend to skip over because it's literally just history of some of the movies. But it's so much more than that. The title, we need a title like Erica's title to entice people to check it out. And <laughs> when you do, um, you will be incredibly, incredibly pleased because it is... It's academic in a way that is not off-putting. It is very smart, but in a way that makes you feel smart afterwards for watching it. And it's not something that uh, is pretentious in any way, which I know somehow I've heard a lot of people say that about Radiance releases, which uh, you should really just watch more of them to understand that these releases are far from pretentious. Um, that's what I've got for recent watches. Uh, let's talk about the book a little bit more, Erica. Uh, okay. What are some of the chapters we got in this thing? Uh, there, It starts off with whoopsie, so that's all the accidents and falls and things like that. There's sharp edges. There's animal attacks, which we'll get to later. Animals and insects. We'll lump them all together. I had a bookmark um, to show. There's drownings, there's fires, there's a chapter with uh, bombs and explosions called Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. <laughs> um, there is one chapter called Too Old for This Shit. And that chapter was basically, I cut, I, I set, <laughs> I, uh, I set a, a limit of age 12, as best as I could tell, because sometimes you just have to guess how old the kid is. Um, but I was like, I got to cut it off at 12. No teenagers. Because once I get into that territory, that's just now we're in slashers and that's book will right. never be done. Um, and, you know, I was like, wait, but the kid in Spookies dies on his 13th birthday and I really want to include Spookies. <laughs> <laughs> so I basically was like, okay, I'm going to have one chapter that's basically an honorable mention for kids that I know are over 12 years old. And so that way I could also include movies like Battle Royale and things like that, because you can't not mention certain movies, but they also, I, I wanted to be really strict about, um, you know, abiding to that 12 year old cutoff. Yes. My girl is in there. There is a sidebar about Macaulay Culkin called the most killable kid because he dies in three <laughs> movies as a child. Um, my girl, good son and Jacob's ladder. Uh, where is it? There it goes. Most killable kid. Um, so I, I really want to stress how many times you've gotten these questions like is X movie in the book. And, uh, I, I, I don't want to say every single movie is in here because obviously no. there's going to be a couple random ones that you've missed, but this is a fairly exhaustive take on child deaths in movies. How, how stringent were you in finding all of them? I mean, at a certain point it's, you just are like, okay, I know I don't have them all, but am, do I feel like I have enough to make the book that's going to make me, me happy? Right. Um, you know, I, I, I went into this kind of the same way I went into the podcast. Like I was like, I want to do the podcast that I want to listen to. 
And in this sense, I was like, I'm going to write the book that I want to read. I just want to read about dead kids. So, um, but yeah, there, there are quite a few that aren't in there because I, so I set up a letterbox list of all the movies that are in this book and there's, um, just under 1200 and not all of those are child kill movies. Some of them are in there because I have like a page dedicated to all the children of the corn movies, but it's like a, you know, here's a layout of like, which ones have a child kill and which ones don't, but it's in the book. So I'm including it on the list. Right. Um, but then I have a supplemental list called even more child kills. And those were movies that either I found after I was like, okay, book is done. I'm not adding any more to it or that other people have told me about. Um, and there's already over a hundred movies on that list alone. So um, yeah, there's, there's still plenty more out there to be discovered. Um, you know, the appendix has roughly 400 movies in it. Um not not quite 400 but up where there's a few hundred movies in the appendix and those all have child kills but they don't have a write-up and some of those very few of them if they were if they were pre 2000 and i didn't do a write-up for it it was probably because it came sort of towards the end of me watching or re-watching it and just being like I don't know if I want to do the write-up for this, but I right. may, I need to make sure to include it. If it's, you know, later than 2000, um, there are some that do have write-ups, but if you look at the years in the appendix, the majority of them are 2000 or later because I'm just like, whatever, confirmed child killed, done, boom. I'm not writing about this. And it's not, it's not because I'm being like elitist about, you know, those movies in those years. It's because a lot of those movies, I don't have anything to say about them, good or bad. And so if I can't even come up with like two sentences to say about it, it's not worth me having a write up in there. I right. would just put it in the appendix, but there's some in there now that like, you know, when we were at the end stages and I looked back and I was like, damn, I, I can think of something now and I wish I would have written something, but um, you know, if, if you, if you, you're never going to be completely happy with something that you make, like you're always going to look at it and be like, I should have done this. I should have done that. I wish I had done that. And at this point I just need to be like, you know what? It, I'm happy with what it is. There's definitely things like I would do differently um, if I were to do it again. But um, I am, I think I wrote this whole thing by myself. Like a lot of people would right. not be writing this many, you know, not even, I mean, they're not full reviews. Some of them are, some of them are just write-ups. There's a lot of personal stories in here and there's a lot of me in this. Like if you read it, like, through throughout you're gonna find out how much i hate pepsi and how much i hate eli roth and like <laughs> things so like this is, that this is the cool thing this is the the right up here for the house that jack built that we were just talking about you'll see at the bottom there's no easy way to share this uh there's a movie rating and i'm looking i don't want to bend my brand new book um <laughs> There's a rating for the film itself and a rating for the child kills for every film. We'll just go with the history of violence. That's easier to show. Um, so you can see the movie's pretty decent, but the child deaths kind of suck. Um, and I love that. And when you're looking at, uh, you know, an, an exhaustive what comes uh, eventually as like an academic learning way to absorb all of the information about this, I like that there's personality in it. So I really hope people check it out because it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And uh, the big thing, where can people check it out, Erica? Uh, so there is a very, very basic big cartel because I literally have one thing to sell. So um, <laughs> I set up a website for you to buy it directly from me. Um, I believe Ryan will have that linked down below. Already is there. It already yep. is. Perfect. Thank you. And then it's also going to be carried at. Sorry, I got a list. Hold on. Boop, boop. All right. So, um, other than that, you're, can, you're also going to be able to buy it from Vinegar Syndrome, Rough Cut Video for all the you Canadians, um, Diabolic Orbit, um, and then in person, they're going to be at the Archive in Connecticut, Forbidden Planet in New York, uh, Paul Bearer Press, House of Stuff here in Austin, Atomic Books in Baltimore, and then a few other small places here in Austin, um, Guzu Gallery, 
end of an ear records and we love video our local video store there's a lot of options yes. uh, basically and that's a good thing um beyond that uh the big cartel site i just linked it in the chat if you really want it uh open that in a <laughs> my, my mom is asking for that as a present <laughs> <laughs> honestly not a bad idea uh support two <laughs> people i love uh beyond that um if you are near any of these places where you can get it in person highly recommend it uh it shows jesse at diabolic it shows market orbit it shows all these brick and mortar stores that you support a, a, a you know an independent author somebody that is doing this on their own and that they should support more things like this so that is a good thing uh if you are in canada strongly recommend rough cut video he will take care of you pascal is a great great person um not much that you can screw up on the website it's literally shop now put this in your cart have a good day uh go buy it thank you yeah definitely for canadians like uh i i can't do any better than you know what i'm offering on shipping and he can do much better for you so it's you know buy from him if you're in canada um, international folks, I can't support that. I like that the shipping just got out of control. It doubled from the time I started my campaign. And so, um, international folks, uh, go to Vincent or Diabolic or Orbit or any, you know, I'm sorry. I just, I can't, I, I, I refuse to charge anyone that much money for shipping. Look at more than the book. It's insane right now. So, and they are businesses and they have deals and they can get you much better price for that. So. Uh, Humboldt Whore Honey says, love you, Erica. I feel seen by this book. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did see that um, Sibner had a question earlier about um, a plan for a chapter called When the Child Was Supposed to Die for films like Cujo. Um, so there are sidebars that are called um, The Book is Better because like in Cujo, the child dies in the book, but he doesn't die in the movie. Same with like American Psycho. And a few others. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give away the whole book, y'all. That's you got to. You got to read it yourself. Um, but yeah, there's um, there there's a sidebar. Stephen King has his own section in the back of the book because you know there's just a lot for him to cover. So Cujo's back there in the Stephen King section. Um, yeah, for anybody that is Aussie, I think we had three or four people from Australia early saying uh, they had to have it. Unfortunately, you're going to have to go to somewhere like like diabolic that's uh it's not that's like unfortunate it's a good thing you're supporting jesse and and it is but it's not like eric is shipping a pallet to some store in in australia to buy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> that that is the unfortunate part yeah i had uh three pallets delivered to my house last week i'm not shipping anything <laughs> more than you know a few boxes at a time to a few retailers around here <laughs> you know i it, it uh, not to put you on the spot do you want mm -hmm. to talk about some of the printing problems Good Lord. <sighs> All right. Um, so I initially had one printer in China that I was set up with. And then I, so I didn't do anything regarding printing for a while. And then it <clears throat> turned out they were going to be much more expensive than they originally quoted. Um, and then, so I went to another printer and they were like, oh yeah, yeah, you're good. And they gave me a quote and I was like, cool, this, I can afford this. Um, and, uh, you know, I was going to cover like everything that I raised from the Indiegogo was going to be covered, um, including like the, you know, the shipping costs to everybody. And, um, we got, you know, the, the final proof into, into them. And then my sales guy decides to tell me like, oh, um, yeah, we might run into a problem, but I don't think, I don't think it's going to get rejected for content. And I was like, okay. And then he came back a week later and was like, yeah, sorry, no go. Um, the, uh, I can't remember some ministry of propaganda bullshit or something like that was like, I understand they have censorship, you know, laws, but like I told him up front what the book was and right. he's a salesperson. So of course he was like, Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. We can make this work. And nope. Um, so yeah, um, that didn't happen. So I had to scramble because we're already, this was in February and it was like Lunar New Year was happening. So all, you know, so many businesses in that region, even outside of China were shut down. And so I was like, 
fuck this. I'm going to. And so I literally went to my, my shelf and started looking at, um, uh, at like my books. I was like, where were these printed? And I found, you know, I looked at like Stephen Thrower's books and things like that. And it was like printed in Estonia. And I was like, fuck yeah, here I come Estonia. I start searching <laughs> for publishers there. Um, and I ended up finding, um, I think it, it was like the, I don't think it was the same publisher, but I started looking in Czech Republic because the Ruggiero Diodato Cannibal Holocaust book was printed there. And I was like, okay, I know Czech Republic's got no problems <laughs> printing any kind of content now. And so I found a really great printer. It ended up being more expensive than I had, you know, pl planned on, but I was already committed to this book being what it, what you have in your hands now, what it is like that kind of paper, that kind of look. Um, so yeah, I mean, <sighs> And then like once everything was done, you know, it takes a few weeks to, you know, get like all the proofs back and forth. And then shipping, of course, takes four to six weeks because it's coming by a boat. And so it just, you know, everything just took a really long time. It got stuck in customs uh, over there for a little while. And it's just, you know, every every potential hiccup that could have happened happened to me. <laughs> like, but it's, you know finally here yeah. this was after a design delay because justin had a ton of work on his uh desk we'll say yeah and beyond all that to have to 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 be in the process and think well everything's going to be okay as soon as justin's done and then a year later after the indiegogo have china go well no never mind i i felt so like third party stress on your behalf when, <laughs> when you told me about all that <laughs> yeah it's uh it's not a fun process. And, you know, this is what happens when, you know, you don't have people doing the work for you. You know, I, yeah. you know, that's not even the start of the, all the problems. Like I couldn't find a publisher. And yeah. so many people told me from the outset, like Zach, the person who convinced me to write this book was like, oh my God, you'll have no problem finding a book on this topic and written by a woman and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I, it was, it was just crickets. And the few people who got back to me were like, yeah, no, that's, we're not going to do this. And to be fair to them, at least to the people who got back to me, I was shopping this book around close to the close to Uvalde time. So yeah. like, I, I get it. But at the same time, like that to me, I was like, this is all the more reason for us to understand like that movies are an escape and we need to be able to enjoy these things. Otherwise, like we, as fucked up as like what this is like if you you just can't find any joy in movies if you're going to just take everything that happens in real life and say well i i can't like see that in movies now you know it's just right. so beyond all that uh obviously it's a little more difficult for uh, an idea that's counterculture, uh, coming from a woman, coming from an independent, uh, not somebody that's been back, not somebody that's published in a major publication book prior. And either way, uh, just like Stan said, you, you should absolutely be justifiably proud. The amount of work that had to go through literally every angle to get this thing in, in my hands, I'm selfish. So, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I appreciate everyone's support now and like, Honestly, you know, I, you know, I, I got it done with a lot of people's help. You know, I had a lot of good people in my corner, not just all the backers, but Justin and Sam uh, Laird, who put the trailer together, which I know got a lot of attention for it. So, um, Lance with the comic. yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and I won't name it, name names on any publishers, but like, yeah, I mean, there was just a lot of people who just didn't get back to me. And you're right. Like, I don't have any, I didn't have any credits to my name, but I was like, look, I, here's all the people who can vouch for me though. <laughs> like that's right. didn't seem to be enough. It's kind of like when people tell you, you know, well, we'll hire, we'll only hire people with experience, but it's like, well, I need a job to get experience kind of right. thing. And so I'm like, well, you know, fuck you. I'll just do it myself. And how about that? Well, uh, to, to see you be triggered one more time. I, I noticed these aren't on the website. How long till these are up? Fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> 
There are no um, more long pot holders. <laughs> God, people, I tonight people <laughs> went nuts about that. I'm like, man, I got so many DMs about them. Yep. Like, there are none. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that you posted that on the Indiegogo, I was like, why would I not get that? I have to get this right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, tonight we're talking about Animal Attacks films after the announcement. So uh, Animal Attacks, why why Animal Attacks? What, what do you love about Animal Attacks movies? Um, because there's a chapter in my book that's Animal Attacks. And there Smart. You go. <laughs> uh, Chris says, I just ordered it. I usually only do movies, but wanted to support your awesome book. Mm, thanks, Chris um any anything else you want to bring up before we go through all of our titles um no just to re-emphasize that like i know some people will ask like what's the best way to support and you know of course like i am selling wholesale to all these other distributors and and, and small businesses so yeah i make more money if you buy it directly from me but i you know i'm not selling on amazon i just right. you know i want to just support small businesses so um, the best way to support me is to support them and just buy from wherever is easiest and makes the most sense for you. If you're already buying stuff from Diabolic, if you're going to go ham on the, you know, Vincent halfway sale, do it. You know, I mean, um, yeah, so just buy it from wherever it makes the most sense for you. But either way, buy it. The book is amazing and you will not be let down. Um, anything else? No. All right, let's get into it. Uh, first up last week, we got some announcements from Second Sight. First is Gonjiam Haunted Asylum from 2018, a modern horror movie. Have you seen this one? <laughs> no. Uh, I, I will stick up for this one then. Uh, I actually really love this movie. Uh, this is a pretty great found footage movie. Uh, really well done. It's like uh, the... It's like the not insufferable version of Deadstream that came out a couple years ago. Uh, and if, if you are a fan of uh, K-Horror in any way, I, I think you'll really like this movie. It's it's really well made. The acting is on point. And uh, as usual, it's Second Sight, so they've got nice hard box release, new audio commentary, a whole bunch of archival featurettes, um, some uh, you know art cards and a 70-page book and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, good-looking release. And uh, going to the next one. Ty West's The Sacrament. What about this one? This seems like it could be an Erica one. It's not. I don't like okay. Ty West. I don't like any of his fucking movies. He's That's in the. Right. It, this is in the book. Um, but yeah, not for me. I'll just leave it at that. Which one is he in the book for? This one. Oh, that's right. I, I haven't seen this one since it came out, so I never even think about this one. Oh, okay. I can be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is... To me, this is the lesser of the two announcements for sure. A uh, small documentary film crew accompanies a man as he travels to Eden Parish in search of his missing sister. It soon becomes apparent that his paradise is not what it seems. Uh, they've got a bunch of new interviews on in this, which is cool if you like this movie. And if you want to see what's coming up for uh, Ty West and uh, how he got to do you know, X and Pearl and Maxine and all that stuff, looks like a fun release for that. Uh, we got Alexander Heller Nicholas on this one. And uh, again, another long book in a slipcase box and all that fun stuff with art cards and everything. Uh, good looking, good looking set. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, we uh, oscilloscope had their 420 sales, so did vinegar syndrome and a few others. So we will bypass that. Uh, <laughs> Kino is releasing Music Box from 1989 on Blu-ray. This is coming at some point. No release date. Jessica Lang in this one. Uh, I don't think I've seen this one. But mm -hmm. I, I've i heard that this one's really great. And uh, Jesse's there saying that it's pretty good. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's, that's a roaring endorsement from Jesse. <laughs> saying, I haven't thought about this in 30 years. <laughs> Uh, next title, this is one a lot of us do remember, Turbulence from uh, 1997. This one is coming on 4K. When this got announced previously from Kino, this was only announced on Blu-ray, so they upgraded this one to 4K. Um, this one is, uh, let's see, Ray Liotta, Lauren Hawley, uh, a few other small names in this, I think. Uh, but yeah, you got a two-disc set, you got a new audio commentary with the director, Robert Butler, and the cool thing, if, uh, well, Erica probably doesn't think so, but uh, moderated by Joe Bagos. 
okay. if you're into modern horror. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Like, I love this movie. This movie is super fun. I think Joe Bagos has great taste, but I don't like his movies. Have you watched all of them? Did you watch Bliss? I almost feel like you would. Like I did. Bliss. I saw Bliss at Fantastic Fest. It's it, his uh, his characters remind me too much of the people in L.A. that I did not like. Um, and so, I, you know, I saw his his other the Christmas one and like I I get what he's going for, but his like his writing and just aesthetic yeah. is just not my bag whatsoever. But like, I appreciate him as a fan of horror movies. Cause like he's got all the little Easter eggs in there. And I was like, okay, well you have good taste, but I just don't like your movies. Uh, Tony's reminding us that music box is also on that Jessica Lang box set that imprint did. Hmm. So uh, yeah, you might already have it. Uh, next up, we are getting a whole bunch of uh, Pride Month titles from Kino. Uh, first one is Arthur Dong's LGBTQ Stories. Uh, this is coming on June 25th. This will have Coming Out Under Fire, License to Kill, and Family Fundamentals. Uh, these are uh, some 4K digital restorations of these. And uh, th these are going to be like super rare. I, I doubt these get any other releases if, if Kino wasn't doing them, nobody, nobody would have been releasing these, I don't think. So mm. bravo to Kino. This is a big deal. Uh, and I guess love for Arthur Dong. Hell of a name. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but keeping it going, uh, they got Anna Boleyn from 1920 as part of the Ernst Lubitsch collection. Uh, this one is going to be coming on June 18th, and it's got a feature-length documentary called Lubitsch in Berlin from 2006 by Robert Fisher. And uh, yeah, 1920. That's a uh, that's pretty old for Kino. They don't normally go that deep. That's pretty rad. Yeah. Uh, everybody giving love for that Arthur Dong box. Love it, Ronnie and Stan. Awesome. Uh, keeping it going with the Pride Month titles, White Room from 1990 is coming on June 11th on Blue from Kino. This says available in the U.S. for the first time. Patricia Rosema's sophomore follow-up to I've Heard the Mermaid Singing follows Norman, an aspiring writer with writer's block who peeps on his neighbors. When he witnesses the murder of famous singer Madeline X, he attends her memorial and encounters a woman connected to her. He follows her home and discovers her nightly visits to a secret room set in Toronto at the 90s. This twisted urban fairy tale as much about the consequences of naive romanticism as much about, uh, sorry, as our uniquely modern obsession with celebrity has two endings, one tragic, one euphoric, both essential. Stars Margot Kidder. That's pretty great. Hmm. We got an audio commentary by the director on this behind the scenes image gallery, and then a short film by the director, which I have a feeling is probably pretty difficult to see. I'm into it. Yeah, sounds fun. Uh, and then more from that director, we get When Night is Falling from 1995. This says long considered to be a pivotal addition to the LGBTQ plus canon the film centers on the story of Camille, a professor at a Protestant college, of course, uh, who is engaged to Martin, a respected minister and fellow professor, as career Christians. God, that is a gross statement. <laughs> <laughs> they are urged to get married so that they can become co-chaplains of the new college of faith. When Camille meets Petra, a wry and flamboyant performer in a modern Fellini-esque circus troupe, she is inexplicably drawn. Camille pursues the sensual dreamlike woman, throwing her whole conservative life, not to mention her engagement, into disarray. A Canadian classic that was in official competition at the 1995 Berlin International Film Festival, When Night is Falling, tells a lesbian story beautifully photographed by Douglas Cook, catching a romantic, wintry Toronto landscape and sounds amazing. Also, has an audio commentary by the director and another short by the director. This one looks pretty amazing. Uh, when Night is Falling is a pretty good 90s lesbian film. Haven't watched it in years, though. Happy to be able to upgrade my DVD, says Ronnie. Nice. Uh, and then a third one <laughs> from that same director, Mouthpiece from 2018. This is a black comedy from the same director. We got an audio commentary on this one as well, behind the scenes and trailers. I am looking forward to getting all three of these in. <laughs> 
Humboldt Horror Honey is disagreeing with the word classic. <laughs> uh, all right. The next is a Ken Loach film called The Old <laughs> Oak. This is from 2023, coming on June 4th on Blu-ray from Kino. Uh, this will have some deleted scenes and a trailer on it. Ken Loach. Have you seen much from him? Actually, I, I haven't. Chris, um, so the director of Handgun or Deep in the Heart worked a lot with Ken Loach. And so that was kind of Chris's side of the commentary because that's more, you know, he's on that side of the pond. And so you do that side and I'll do the Texas stuff kind of thing is how we work the commentary. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I've actually been curious to uh, watch some of the Ken Loach stuff after doing that. Well, this is his final film, so uh, that might be an extra reason for somebody Ooh. to pick this up. This was a part of the Cannes Film Festival, so, uh, I, I, well, it's Ken Loach. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that anything from him was going to make it to Cannes at that sure. point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, June 4th, Kino is releasing Lost Souls with a Z. This is from 2023, coming on Blu-ray. This one is, uh, sounds pretty fun, actually. This one's got an audio commentary by the director and the star, uh, we've got some short films on this from 2019 and 2021 as well. Um, really just want to point out how many times I've said Kino is releasing short films in the last five minutes. That is super yeah. rare for boutiques and for Kino to be stepping it up like that should be noticed and applauded. Uh, for years, we talked about how Kino wouldn't do anything on titles. And then on top of that, they've also started doing uh, commentaries on pretty much everything. But to get stuff like short films is really, really great. And then Michael says, spelling error on the cover, someone's getting fired. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, The Boys in the Boat, coming from MGM, which is, of course, owned by Amazon, sadly. Uh, this is the George Clooney film from 2023. He directed this. Uh, surprisingly, I've heard it's pretty great. Um, have not seen this one. I have a huge feeling Eric has never seen this one. I've never even heard of this movie. <laughs> 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 I, I don't think many people saw that. Um, Could it just go straight to Amazon or something? I don't, a... I don't think so. I mean, even the poster here says only in theaters Christmas oh, Day. Oh, shit. Well, I can't read that. <laughs> um, it's a sports drama movie, so yeah. Oh, well, I definitely wouldn't have... That wouldn't have been on my radar at all then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sivner says it's got a nice 90s Disney sports movie feel. Yep, that sounds very Erica. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man i wish i could bottle that that emotion there <laughs> uh hey we've been talking about fun city tonight with deep in the heart handgun their next title that just got announced is stranger's kiss from 1983 this is coming on june 25th on blue and what's cool they have a strictly limited bundle of two different slipcover variants uh, this one that you see on the screen now is going to be the the main one that you can get elsewhere. Uh, but if you really want this one, you can only get it from the Fun City website. And if you want a bundle, you can get both slipcover options. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like a, a fun art style for this one. And you can pre-order this already, shipping in June. I'm not seeing this one. I haven't either. But, I mean, I trust in Fun City, so... Sibner says there's a lot of boys in that boat, Eric. You don't know if any of them die. However, it's a Disney least... movie. I know they don't. And they're all at least teenagers. Or no, it's not a Disney movie. Sorry, but whatever. They described it in the comments as Disney and Hallmark. So I okay, doubt that's yeah, well, that's not happening. Maybe one of them dies at that point. I doubt it. If they ugh, fine, someone else watch it and report back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody dies. <laughs> uh <laughs> I'm so glad Erica gets to talk about all these. Uh, June 25th, <laughs> we are getting a 4K release of South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. How do you feel about that, Erica? I'm very indifferent. I don't understand the need for this, but I mean, sure. I, I just, I haven't watched South Park in years, so... The, like this is just out of left field for me, but I mean, I'm sure there's still South Park fans. So, you know, good for them. You can watch it in 4k. 
for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh this one has gotten a lot of comments like that why is this going to be 4k what's going on with that and uh yeah th i mean i think the biggest reason here is the expanded colorway through hdr hopefully it's decent um but yeah I i'm not getting this <laughs> uh, yeah, i'm good but to go with it uh because i know erica's dying to have it they're also doing team america world police in 4k no oh, of course <laughs> all of these uh, are surprises to me because like i have not been like paying attention to anyone's instagram for like the past week so all of this i'm like the only thing i that i saw was the the box set that i will get excited about and that's amazing it. amazing um yeah so this will be uh on 4k as well coming on the same day same thing from paramount june 25th um i do want to point out for both of these these are kind of like beloved comedies for a full generation they did nothing at all for special features no, nothing additional hmm. matt and trey couldn't be bothered to do a commentary for south park come on it like that was a huge movie robin williams freaking sang blame canada at the oscars and you can't get anybody to talk about this movie that's this is sad yeah um so the question is uh is team america coming with the unrated cut here's the problem the theatrical cut is coming on 4K and the unrated cut is coming on the Blu-ray. So you can get the unrated cut also with this, but you will not be able to get the unrated cut on 4K. So, yeah. Some awesome Paramounts haven't gotten a Blu-ray, but these get a 4K without any new extras. That's BS. Yes. Um... Not well, not no extra stand, just the same extras that you've had for 25 years. <laughs> Eric, thanks for noticing the Matt Damon hashtag. No, no new extras. I, I don't know if Team America has any extras, uh, but I know that the South Park one does. Anyways, that's enough about those two movies. Okay. Um, <laughs> Kino is releasing Diary of a Chambermaid from 1964 on Blu ray here soon. Uh, this is a Boonwell film, and I'm sure we'll do so-so for them. Nothing crazy. Uh, have you seen this one, Erica? Yeah, I actually just watched this recently for um, tangentially related to the podcast. Um, someone in the cast was in one of the movies that we covered, and I loved it. I thought it was great. Nice. Yeah. Uh, this will probably come out in a good six months or four years. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, next title, Sony coming out of nowhere and releasing Man's Castle from 1933. Um, this seems this seems like something to definitely celebrate. Uh, for a studio to come out and to do something like this is kind of surprising. They have not been given a lot of love to these things unless you're Warner Archive and even that. Do you count that as Warner? I don't know. Anyways, uh, this says, Deep into the Great Depression, homeless Trina meets the handsome, sharply dressed Bill played by Spencer Tracy, in a public park after treating her to an expensive meal that he cannot pay for. Trina realizes that he too is down on his luck. The two decide to share Bill's derelict home, paving the way for a budding romance surrounded by the colorful friends and neighbors of Hoover Flats. A showgirl pregnancy and Bill's wandering tendencies are sure to test the strength of their relationship, not to mention the financial hardships of the Depression. Uh, this is pretty great. Greg says, tangentially related to the podcast would be a great name for a pop podcast. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I forgot this one's here. <laughs> it's the week for Paramount Comedies. July 2nd, they're releasing Anchorman on 4K. Do you like this one any more than the other two that we just talked about? I'm happy that people will be able to get Anchorman in 4K, but... I've seen it once. I don't need to see it again. I understand this is like one of those just heavily quotable movies, but it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's not for me. Like I, <laughs> I watched it one time. It's funny. Sure. But like, I don't need to own it. And that's, that's my whole like collection is like, yeah. I need to own something. I want to, I'm going to watch it multiple times. Like oh, there's no occasion where I'm ever gonna watch anchorman again in so 4K. i don't need to own it especially in 4k <laughs> i really don't care yeah let, let's just hurry up and get to the strickland i get it 
Uh, <laughs> hey, I put up an interview this week uh, with Mitchell Beaupre, who is the senior editor of Letterboxd. Um, I don't know how much to say about this one, but uh, I will say this is one of those interviews I'm rather proud of. Uh, I, I feel like <laughs> Mitchell and I got heavy into like ADHD land while talking, and we are both just talking very quickly for like good like 75 minutes so there's a lot of information in this uh letterbox for a lot of people is one of the most valuable tools not to mention it is the tool behind erica's podcast so what i was planning on doing hey we didn't talk about unsung whores before this erica let's talk about your podcast what what is unsung whores and why should people listen to it oh i can't tell people why they should listen to it but i can tell you what it is uh it's um so basically like Lance, my co-host Lance and I take turns picking a horror movie, but the movie that we cover has to have fewer than 1000 views on letterbox at the time that we cover it. So we're, we're digging pretty deep. You know, most of the films that we cover tend to be foreign films because of that. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, we usually like, we'll do kind of a deep dive in the cast and crew and then talk about the movie for maybe 20, 30 minutes. And then, um, and then we will pick some double features with it and things like that. Um, you know, uh, Mitchell, you know, if uh, you want to sponsor our podcast, just saying. <laughs> I know that they're out there. I've heard other podcasts are like, oh, and we have an offer for Letterbox. I'm like, yo, we've had our podcast for four freaking years and it's based on Letterboxd and Letterboxd is ignoring I'm not saying I try to like stalk them or anything, but I was tagging them and like everything when we first started the podcast and I got nothing. Mitchell. I, I can get Mitchell in contact. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's the plug. Go listen to Unsung Horrors. Uh, more, one of the best podcasts out there. That's right. Uh, but speaking of the best. Fuck yes. Here we go. Uh, Curzone in the UK is releasing a Peter Strickland box set on June 24th. And uh, we're just going to go through all of this because this is a uh, comprehensive box set. This says, Step into the Weird, A Wonderful World of Peter Strickland with this comprehensive limited edition six Blu-ray disc collection boasting his complete fe feature filmography to date. The Barbarian Sound Studio, The Duke of Burgundy, In Fabric, Flux Gourmet, and Strickland's debut film, Catalan Varga, available on Blu-ray for the first time. Also included are more than a dozen short films spanning over 30 years of Strickland's filmmaking career, from his first forays into music videos to a brand new short film exclusive to this collection. Many of these included shorts have never been seen before and are newly restored, accompanied by diary-like exploration featured in the editorial booklet written by the director himself. So you've got all five films over seven hours of special features, including newly restored and never before seen short films and music videos, interviews behind the scenes, commentaries, deleted scenes, featurettes, theatrical trailers, collectible posters, and a collectible enamel pin, plus a 48 page booklet, including a new essay from film critic Anton Biddle, a piece by Fatma Mohammed, who has appeared in all of Strickland's feature films on her collaborations with the director, and new writings on his short films by Strickland himself. Why is this an amazing release? I mean, every movie in that is just an absolute banger. And I mean, I, I could pick a favorite. Yeah, I'm with I'm I'm with her. It's Duke of Burgundy is a perfect film. But if you look on my letterbox, I gave it four and a half, and that's only because I have a moth phobia. So I couldn't give it five stars just because of that. I was like, God, you're making me really uncomfortable with these moths. <laughs> but, um, I, yeah, this is just, this is a no brainer for me. I love all of these movies. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's so good. And if anyone hasn't seen them like this, I mean, I don't, I don't want to tell someone to blind buy something that's probably going to be pretty expensive. Well, um, we, we got a question. Somebody asked how much is it? And I, I wanted to throw that in here real quick. This is shockingly cheap. Uh, if you buy this from Amazon in the UK, it's like 65 pounds. If you buy this from Diabolic right now, pre-order it, it's like 85 bucks for five movies and all of his short films. That's not a bad price for a comprehensive director box set. That's actually not, no. I know it's only five feature-length films, but uh, yeah. They're, all of them are like, they're so fantastic though. Like right. it's just, it's worth it, you know. 
It's not five Thai West films. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, after Maxine comes out and A24 releases X, Pearl, and Maxine on 4K in a special edition set, it will probably, no, I guarantee it will cost more than this. The oh, entire yeah. box set. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so this will go great with the other Curzone stuff if you have their other sets. The only thing I want to say, um, I have not uh, started much into the Von Trier box set yet, but uh, our other podcast on the Someone's Favorite Productions Podcast Network, They Live By Film, is doing a Von Trier full career retrospective right now, and uh, they're watching through the Curzone box set and noted they don't include subtitles uh, on most of those films, even... Yeah, I understand it's an English film and you know we're talking about English subtitles, but none at all. That's that's kind of depressing in 2024. Yeah, I I turn them on for everything, so that sucks. That's why I watched this release instead of getting it out of the box set. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, that's an interesting idea. Stan says, In Fabric is a fascinating variant on I'm Dangerous Tonight by Toby Hooper. Hmm. Don't say licensing for caption, Sibner. That's not how that works. Uh, hey, we hey, talked about this before. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll just shout. <laughs> Am I the problem because I posted the picture of this? <laughs> you are the problem, actually. You know how many messages I got after you posted? I was like, God damn it, Ryan. I was too excited. I'm sorry. That's uh, fine. You can. I'm glad you're excited, but man, I had to send some like. I had so to where can people buy these? People. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sweetest taboo book dot big cartel dot com. Please go buy it uh, from everybody. Um, captions, not caption subtitles. It those are interchangeable for a lot of people. Sorry. Um, Brandon wants to know, what director would you like a Curzon box set from, Erica? Mm. I'd have to think about that. I can't answer questions like that on the spot. <laughs> oh, man. that That is a good question. Looking at who they've done it for already... Um, I don't know. I mean, I I could be funny and and uh, give the the same answer that I've given many times when I've talked about my uh, my wish list sort of box set, and I'll say Curzon should do a Takashi Miike box set. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> it would only cost like fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh, Celine Siama is a good one. John R. Cherry the third, Jamie Gillis. Pedro Costa. <laughs> Jamie Gillis one would be funny. That would be. I would buy that, but that that would be a lot of movies. That's like 200, yeah, 200 it, movies. And that and box would be... that better be in the shape of a cock. <laughs> in the with the belly band and the slip cover and all kinds of goodies on the inside. Yeah. Um I, I could see that selling like seven copies. It would be Heather Drain would buy three of them. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yes, Mike is a fun idea. An ozone box set, David Lean. Oh, John Waters. That's actually a really good pick. Oh uh, yeah, I could. That's the one I could actually see happening because I don't think the UK has good releases for most of his films. All righty. Uh, next up, <laughs> I forgot this one was here. Uh, July 23rd, MVD is releasing The Linguini Incident with Rosanna Arquette and David Bowie. And uh, this one's got a surprising amount of uh, extras on here. We got an introduction by the director, commentary with the director, um, with uh, Rosanna Arquette and Esther Belint, who's the co-producer, uh, or sorry, co-producer Sarah Jackson. And then the co-screenwriter Tamar Bratt, who's all moderated by Heath from over at Serial at Midnight. Commentary uh, by the director himself. And then a feature-length documentary about the making of the film featuring a whole bunch of interviews. We've got uh, the original theatrical version on this. We've got the director's cut, photo gallery, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then on top of that, a booklet with essays from multiple film historians on an MVD marquee release. 
that normally doesn't happen. Uh, this is pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. More ideas. Olivier Asias, that'd be a good one to do a box set for for Cruzone. Uh, Pedro Madovar, I would buy that in a freaking heartbeat. Joe D'Amato, that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, when Eight Bells Toll is getting a, another release from Kino, this is coming out on June 25th on Blu ray. Uh, it's got some reversible art this time. This is what it looks like. And this is one of those times where they're re releasing it, uh, but now it's encoded at a higher bit rate on a dual layer disc. They've also uh, added a couple things. It's got a brand new audio commentary. It's got English subtitles for the first time and reversible art and a slipcover, of course. The commentary on this one is by Steve Mitchell and Cyrus Voris, who is a screenwriter and producer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm not going to bring it up, Eric, but that's really funny. I mean, uh, I like McLean's writing so i've never seen this but uh young anthony hopkins well semi young anthony hopkins. yeah i don't it's one of those things where it's like i don't i don't need to own this but like i'll keep my eye out for it like at the library or something you know yeah that makes sense uh mill creek is a name that we've not talked about in quite some time they're doing a romance double feature just for erica with once around from 1991 and the movie evening from 2007 uh, how many copies of this have you pre-ordered already? Uh, well, eight, because, you know, I want one for each room and then a couple of Christmas gifts. You have eight rooms? Oh, okay. Christmas. Well, Christmas. three bedrooms, kitchen, living room, dining room, bathrooms, you know. Touche. Yeah. I forgot the houses are bigger in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an eight-bedroom house, Ryan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> June 11th, Media Blasters is releasing the same movies they've already released before, but in a two-pack this time. Zebraman and Zebraman 2, you can get those together if you would like. Uh, it's going to be on one Blu-ray and one DVD. Amazing. Thanks, Media Blasters. Uh, Warner Archive came out with a pretty big month for a lot of people. Uh, these are all coming on June 14th. This first one is Act of Violence from 1948 with uh, Janet Lee and Robert Ryan. Those are the two of the bigger names in this one. And uh, we've got some extras this month. we got quite a few, actually. Feature commentary by Drew Casper on this. Featurette on this called Act of Violence Dealing with the Devil. And uh, I'm very interested to see this one. Yeah, I love Robert Ryan. I'm in. He does good work. Uh, next is a pretty young Roger Moore in the Alaskans from, uh, this is the complete series. This ran from 1959 to 1960. This is going to come with eight Blu-ray discs. That's a lot. Uh, it's almost 2000 minutes of content and, uh, yeah, they are going all in for it. I I'm still shocked that they're doing this. I hope it does well for them. Yeah. And the next one is The Shining Hour with Joan Crawford, Robert Young, Margaret Sullivan. This is coming on June 14th as well. This is from 1938. And extras on this. We've got an audio-only vintage MGM radio program. Good News of 1939 with scenes from The Shining Hour. And then a couple classic cartoons. I love when they throw in those classic cartoons. Uh, what's going on, Dell? Uh, has Warner Archive ever done a stacked pack like that? Yes, but not in a long time. I think it's been like a couple of years, actually. Uh, next one is The Man I Love from 1947. Uh, this one is a big deal. Ida Lupino is worshipped by many of the people that watch this channel, so I'm sure that this is exciting. Uh, you've also got Raul Walsh directing this. You've got Andrea King, Robert Alda. Uh, and then some extras, classic WB cartoons. We've got two of them, Roughly Squeaking and Slick Hair. Uh, this looks good. <laughs> oh, Will. <laughs> uh, then, uh, oh my gosh, some random, random posts go crazy when I post some of these announcements. This one got so many people... <laughs> It, uh, just up in arms like, oh my God, finally. I didn't know so many people were really hoping for the 1990 version of The Flash on Blu-ray. But if you really wanted another stacked disc set, this comes with six discs. 
Uh, this is coming all in uh, one Blu-ray case, so it definitely will be stacked. 22-episode live-action series from the 1990-1991 season series that they did. Um, yeah, The Flash. Why is this your favorite superhero? <laughs> uh, I can't even come up with anything snarky to say. Like, I didn't even know this was a TV show. I... <laughs> I'm like, Warner can put out Marvel? What? I don't know. <laughs> it's I don't... not even Marvel. That's the funny part. Well, I, you know, what? I don't know. Like, It's yeah. DC and Warner Brothers owns DC Comics. Okay, well, I'm happy for everyone that's happy that this is coming out. <laughs> there is another Warner archive, but uh, they delayed in posting it. So we've got a couple other things to talk about first. Uh, July 2nd, Mill Creek is also releasing Icons Unearthed, The Simpsons. This is a long documentary on The Simpsons. Um, over 11 hours of interviews in the bonus features, which is crazy. Uh, this is a six-part documentary series. And now they've released two of these. I have a feeling we will likely get the others that they're doing of this. They, they've got quite a few. So I would not be surprised if, uh, if they did the rest. They probably have the rights to all of them. Mm. I would watch uh, this as long as they only focused on seasons like two through seven. And then I'm after that, I'm out. So specific. Very specific. Those are like, that's peak Simpsons. I mean, I can't argue with that. I know. Cause it's the right answer. Like, I don't. <laughs> that was a lifetime ago though, too. Uh, May 20th. There is a new UK home video label called old gold media. And they are releasing Jack the Ripper from 1988. This is the Michael Caine, Jack the Ripper. And if you recognize this artwork, it's because it's literally the exact same package that Network released. Uh, Old Gold has picked up the rights to some of the Network titles and will be releasing them themselves. Uh, this has the previously restored original TV version on here, and it's got a new 5.1 mix compared to the Network release. Uh, but that's it. I've never seen this version. Have you seen this one? Mm -mm, I haven't, but I love Michael Caine, so I'd, I'd be curious to watch it. I uh I like the all the Jack the Ripper adaptations too. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, Michael Smith, I watched the Tracy Ullman show where the Simpsons started as shorts, but have never watched the series at all. Oh wow. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Next up, this is the other Warner Archive, and this one's a big deal because it is directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It's Mr. and Mrs. Smith from 1941. I believe this is the last of the the late or like the modern-ish era Hitchcock to come to Blu-ray. Um, there are a couple of the really old Hitchcocks that have still not been released on Blu-ray. Uh, but this one is coming on the same date as the others, June 14th, and uh, starring Carol Lombard, Robert Montgomery. And on this one, we've got a fit featurette called Mr. Hitchcock Meets the Smiths, Classic Cartoons, The Cat's Tale, and Sports Champions. Two audio-only radio broadcasts with Lux Radio Theater broadcasts with Carol Lombard and Bob Hope. And Screen Guild Players broadcast with Errol Flynn and Lana Turner. Those are some big names. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a this is a big one. This is uh one that a lot of people have wanted for a long time, even though this is one that most people call like the the worst of all the, the late era Hitchcocks. So uh we'll see how it sells. Then Kino is releasing. Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema 19. This is coming on June 18th. And uh, this one actually has some decent movies in this. We got some fairly decent uh, sized names. We got Ida Lupino in one of these, Charlton Heston, Barbara Stanwyck, Robert Ryan. We got all kinds of new commentaries. Uh, Alan K. Rowe does one for Dark City, Imogen Sarah Smith for No Man of Her Own. We got a second one on No Man of Her Own with Julie Kurgo and Peter Hinkoff. And then professor and film scholar Jason A. Nye does one for Beware My Lovely. This might be one of the more compelling of their box sets. Uh, thankfully, it comes 19 deep into the series. <laughs> Can't 19. That, okay, that's that's a lot. <laughs> There's people who have all of these, and that's insane to me. Yes, there are. There's people that have watched all of these, probably. Good Lord. What are these people? <laughs> Any of time. <laughs> 19... Film noir box sets, which quite a few of these are far from noir. Um, 
hey, there's a fundraiser out there for a documentary being made called The Cult of VHS 2. I did the, the fundraiser for the first one, and it's a pretty decent doc. It's uh, it's pretty fun. It's just for people that like VHS and that era. Uh, they've already interviewed friend of the channel Michael Keane and a handful of other people you'll recognize, like uh, Donald Farmer, uh, noted filmmaker. <laughs> um, yeah, should be fun. Check out the Kickstarter. Open for a few times. Uh, open for a few times. Open for a few more weeks. That's what I meant. Uh, Brendan says, I heard your cat meow, and that means you're obligated to show them on camera now. Oh, Toby was just announcing that he just took a huge dump. He does that after he uses the litter box. <laughs> Thank you, Toby. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, then, uh, this one is odd. Uh, you're not a Doctor Who person, are you? Oh, John, my boyfriend is like, yeah, he's he's huge. Well, uh, not more recent Doctor Who. Like he's uh, he's a classic Doctor Who. So, did, have you seen this announced? This is the Celestial Toy Maker from 1966, no. and they took the audio format from it and they're animating it. Okay, Very I didn't see this announced idea. because like I haven't been paying attention to anything this week. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I know you've been a little busy. I get it. A little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. This looks interesting. BBC is releasing it on June 11th. A uh, lot of people that are super fans of Doctor Who don't seem too into it, but mm. I don't know anything about Doctor Who, so enjoy it. Okay. Uh, then just today, Eureka announced that their Masters of Cinema collection is growing with Message from Space. This is coming on Blu-ray in the UK only, not in the U.S., on July 22nd, and uh, this is Message from Space from 1978. This one's going to have a whole bunch of special features on there. We've got a uh, brand new audio commentary by Tom Mess, which is probably rad. Appreciation of the film by Patrick Macias, a reversible sleeve, and a booklet with new writing by Christopher Stewardson. Have you seen this one? This one actually does look like an Erica movie. I've seen this, and I yeah, Vic Morrow, I love it. If I remember correctly, this has like flying... Or like golden walnuts or something in it. I think the, it's a Kinji Fugas Fug, bleh, Kinji Fugasaku. Kinji Fugasaku. And uh yeah, I remember like this one. It's not great. It's but I, I if I had to guess, I probably gave it like three stars on letterbox. But like I remember like it's got a lot of weird stuff in it and it was really fun. Plus Vic Morrow. Come on. Dell says it looks like a Star Wars knockoff because it is. It is absolutely a Star Wars knockoff. Uh, one more from Eureka this month. They're also doing the Double Crossers from 1978. This one, however, is coming in the UK and the US and Canada. July 22nd, UK. July 23rd, US and Canada. This one is following in the footsteps of Golden Harvest earlier Bruce Lee vehicles. This one was made in the years following his death when the company was in search of a new generation of martial arts stars. Uh, you got a Sammo Hung appearance in this one. Uh, this one will have a new audio commentary by the man Frank Jang. Also, a new audio commentary by Arna Venema and Mike Leader. And a collector's booklet with new writing by James Oliver. And looks like a pretty damn fun release. Pretty pretty like stereotypical eureka release yeah i'm looking forward to this one john john was excited he john mentioned this one so he doesn't get excited looks about blu-rays too often but he's excited <laughs> about this good looks good uh may 27th 101 films is releasing a shock to the system in the uk and uh this one i remember hearing about ages ago this one's from 1990 starring michael kane and uh, I, I love the tagline they went with. He's killing on impulse, and he won't rest until he gets a corner office. All right. That's okay. I mean, I love Michael Caine, but I don't love that tagline. <laughs> Audio commentary with the director, Jan Eggleson, and an interview with the director with an alternate ending on this is all we get. Uh, if you're a big fan, Will Patton is also in this one. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then Criterion announced that Janus Contemporaries is getting a 3D Blu-ray release of the Vim Vendors film from last year, Anselm, which is supposedly great. Uh, heard good things about the 3D on this. So to the 27 of you that still have 3D players and TVs that support them, uh, congratulations. Um, this looks like a good release. And then I love how 
just like the rest of the uh, Janus contemporary lines. They have Meet the Filmmakers, a new interview with director Vim Vendors. Like, everybody's meeting Vim Vendors, and he's one of these new up-and-coming directors that they've put out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vim Vendors, do you like anything from him? Uh, I can't say I've seen anything from him. I know we have a bunch of his movies on our shelf, but I just haven't gotten to any of them yet. No, no wings of desire yet. Oh, we did watch that. I forgot. Sorry. It's yeah. We, we watched that one. really recently. That's why it's not in my brain, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I need to give it another shot. I, I think that that was in like, that was the week before books arrived. And so like my brain was like over here and I'm watching it. So we have Paris, Texas on the shelf and like we have um, John went to go see the most recent one he just did. And so, yeah, it's just, he's just kind of one I, I haven't gotten to and, you know, I'll get to it. There's too much to get to. You know, the kind of stuff Erica does love. Mm. Air 4444 oh. is putting out Red to Kill. Here we go. <laughs> this is uh, going to be available for pre-order soon. This one is from 1994 and is uh, what the kids are saying is a, quote, banger. Uh, <laughs> this is one that people have wanted for a long, long time. Uh, looks like a fun release. Uh, they they did confirm that there's going to be multiple like pre-order packages to get all three films that they've announced over the last few weeks. All the slip covers, all the stickers, all the everything, everything. Um, this one's going to have a double-sided slip cover with new artwork, a booklet with an essay by Tom Cunliffe, three stickers, a reversible artwork, Blu-ray sleeve. And then uh, this is a new 2K restoration. Audio commentary by Bruce Holchek and Art Edinger on this one. Uh, there is a 45-minute visual essay from Arna Venema and Mike Leader talking about Cat 3. That's really exciting. Uh, there's also another visual essay on here by Jiro and Bijil. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. I know I'm not. Uh, he is from Horrible Reviews, or they are from Horrible Reviews. Uh, don't know anything about that one because there's no details. But Red to Kill, why don't you tell us about this one, Erica? I love this depraved movie. And, you know, this is not, this should not be a blind buy unless you're already like, in like I love cat three movies and how like messed up and offensive they are unless you're in that realm and you just haven't seen this yet this is not a blind buy for like oh this looks fun it's not fun it's <laughs> it's pretty reprehensible in multiple ways um so okay thank you Craig God all right someone else is with me <laughs> on wings of desire anyway cat three movies uh this this is one that, yeah, I get why everyone who's who loves these movies is really looking forward to it. I'm one of them. I'm this is an instant pre order for me. Um, this is definitely only for certain people, though. Like, this isn't for the like, oh, I'll watch you know, the untold story, and oh, that was that was pretty nasty. E. Like, this, this is I love the hand movement, <laughs> the untold story. <laughs> Uh, Cam wants to know if there's a child death, which means it would be in the book. Yes. Uh, to put it lightly, yes. <laughs> there's actually multiple in this one, so yeah, it's um, yeah, it's 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 great if you're if you're happy in this world, but it's definitely not for it's not for most people. <laughs> <laughs> that is all of the announcements for this week, which. There was a surprisingly uh, a large amount of things for this week. Uh, did not expect that many, but we got we got some good ones in there. Um, for what is coming out next week, uh, lots of stuff Erica has pre-ordered. We're getting Andor, the complete first season. Uh, we're getting Obi-Wan Kenobi, the complete series. Mean Girls in 4K. Moon Knight, the complete first season. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, complete first season. Uh, the Oceans Trilogy, all in 4K. Tin Star from Arrow. Uh, let's see. The Getaway came out as a Shout exclusive last week. That's shipping already. Meet John Doe from Classic Flicks. Basket Case in 4K. Are you upgrading Basket Case to 4K in your house, Erica? No, I don't need to. I like 
there's certain movies that I just prefer to watch on like dirty DVDs, you know, and that's one of them. So I, I don't need, I don't need an upgrade. <laughs> uh, Brendan wants to know on run to kill. Is it on a level of, or did I just say the wrong title? Uh, Red to kill. Uh, there's so many to kill titles oh. uh, on, for red to kill. Is it on the level of run to kills child death? Uh, no, the, there's it's child death crazy. in it, but nothing is like the run and kill child death, but the, uh, the treatment of a certain group of people is very questionable. The tap dancing here is wonderful. By I'm the way. trying to like, <laughs> not get your video flagged. I've already like let the profanity fly. So I'm really trying. Oh, to you can say whatever you want by all means. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not, not, I don't think there's, there's very few movies that are on the level of the, the child kill as run and kill, but red to kill is reprehensible in its own other special way um for different reasons so i don't want to spoil it for anyone because like if you're like if you like cat three movies and you haven't seen this you're in for you're in for like a treat but don't bring like don't just invite random friends over to watch it though because yeah john likes to tell a story about how the first time he watched untold story he was over at a friend's house and his friend went in the room and the roommates came home and the chopstick scene came on <laughs> Like right when the roommates walked course. in and they were like, what the hell? <laughs> so, uh, We are getting the Mask of Fu Manchu from Warner Archive next week. World War Three shipping from Def Crocodile. Hi, Craig. Uh, Dogfight from Criterion. Husera from another one of the partner labels. Everybody's getting Madam Web in 4K, I'm sure. Uh, mm -hmm. The Shape of Night from Radiance is shipping. Uh, starting over from Kino. Death and the Maiden is another Shout Factory site exclusive. The Rain People from Warner Archive. Devil's Doorway from Warner Archive, uh, Bluebeard from Kino, uh, I think that's uh, Misunderstood from Radiance, not a whole lot more. Uh, Ninja Terminator is delayed, by the way, Cauldron and Neon Eagle announced that that is coming soon. Uh, it got held up with the Replicator and uh, should be in our hands very, very soon. Love Life from Os Oscilloscope is shipping, True Love from Kino. And that's the bulk of the big ones. Uh, anything here that's uh, exciting for Erica? I know not a whole lot, but... Uh... What about uh, Hotspur and the Scavengers? Did you pick those up? No, not yet. I'm waiting for a sale on that one. Smart. I've also heard Lola. I think that, yeah, this one's actually supposed to be really great. I definitely want to check that one out. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's a it's a very uh, populous heavy week next week. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I'm all, I'm like, there's a bunch of stuff on here. I'm like, oh. <laughs> time to be quiet. I yeah. totally get it. Yeah, um, we did get a question from Michael. Did you see this? Uh, as Erica is not into newish horror, have you seen Possessor from Brandon Cronenberg? I have seen that actually. Yeah, because you know, like, he's offspring of David Cronenberg. So like, it's a requirement. How bad can he be? And then, yeah, I like, I like possessor a lot. Um, I did. I haven't seen, um, his one before that was it anti anti -viral? Anti -viral. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that yet. It's been on my list. Um, I told my library to order it and they're a little slow moving. So, uh, all right. Time for some animal attacks movies. And we are just talking about five favorites. These are not, we're not saying these are the five best in the genre necessarily. Um, wh what, what was your first animal attacks movies that you ever watched? I mean, I guess if you count jaws, like I saw that when I was six, I showed my youngest jaws when he was six last year. Yeah. Perfect timing. <laughs> Is he okay with it? He loved it. Yeah. yeah. Loved everything about it. Okay. I still won't go in the ocean. So <laughs> it's I good love you don't live anywhere near a coast. Well, no, I Texas. grew up in California though. And like well, I that's, would well, Texas is still close. That's I was joking about it. I mean, I'll go to the beach. I would go to the beach, but I'm like, I'm not fucking going in the water because there's <laughs> sharks in there. But I will watch any dumb shark movie. Like I it triggered this whole like movie trajectory where i was like i gotta watch every shark movie that ever came out i even watched these uh lifetime movies um called stalkers prey josh hurtado turned me on to them 
and it's a very josh hurtado thing yeah and they're like um that movie fear the marky mark movie but it's like that Love but with movie. sharks and there's a trilogy of them and they're phenomenal the third one goes full ham like it goes into like psycho territory like the movie psycho not just like where, psycho. where do you see these uh the first two were on tubi and the third one was on hoopla i might have to watch these craig i hope you don't die <laughs> i honestly mean that uh how how did you select for tonight sibner wants to know do fantastical animals count or does it have to be real animals so I was I I have some like mutant animals um, that I was going to do. I honestly just pulled ones that I have like off my shelf because I I put mine together about five minutes before we started uh, recording <laughs> because I forgot <laughs> we were doing this. Not that I didn't forget I was recording, but I forgot about this part of it. And so this is very hastily put together, but still trying to go for like less seen movies for the most part wait when uh, i think he's reading the description of one of the movies that you were talking about <laughs> or no uh he's talking about the okay he's talking about the the comparison to fear now i get the joke. oh okay i was like <laughs> what really i was like did i watch an edited version of a lifetime movie because damn i missed out um oh man Oh, Stan, I was going to put Night of the Lepus on my list, but I don't have it on my shelf. So I, I nixed that one. But that one's super fun. I, I did the same thing. I considered a few and then took them off because I didn't have them available. Uh, I've got all five picked up, ready to go. Um, let's see. what What's your first title? What, which one are we going to be talking about? Um, so the one that I wanted to pick that I love is um, Kingdom of the Spiders. But I don't, mm. I don't have it, so I went with the next best thing, and that's Tarantulas, Deadly Cargo. Um, this one actually has a child kill in it, but I watched it after the book was already done, so it's on my supplemental list. Um, but it's got, um, you know, tarantulas. Look at that, cute and fuzzy. I like the artwork on it, too. Um, Tom Atkins is randomly in it, but... It's fun. Like, it's just like, you know, spiders. It's kind of like arachnophobia in the sense of like this cargo plane comes in and it's got spiders from another country and then they all invade and uh, take over the town. And it's everything you expect it would be in that kind of movie. So, um, yeah. Tarantulas, the deadly cargo. Still in uh, still in print. You can get it from Kino mm -hmm. and uh, came out um, either. I think it was the same day as that movie Ants as well. Or... Yeah, and it has a commentary from Amanda on there. Nice, 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 nice. Um, my first one that I want to talk about tonight is uh, I'm throwing it out there because Erica might have also picked it, and uh, I picked this because we watched this as part of a Discord watch along for the Patreon about gosh, like a year and a half or two years ago now, and this was such a fun movie to watch with the group, and uh, definitely just want to say. If you've never seen the Severn release of Day of the Animals, uh, this movie is so much fucking fun. Um, <laughs> there was a good 20 years where the U.S. was uh, scared to death of us depleting our ozone layer. So not only was it in the news every day, but we made movies about it. And this movie is about uh, the depletion of our ozone layer. So it causes all animals that are above 5,000 feet altitude to just start going insane. And uh, go insane, they do. This movie is so much fun. Um, there's all kinds of crazy animals in this. So it's not just one. It's not like rabid dogs attacking. It's literally everything above 5,000 feet. And it's a goddamn blast. And a lot of it is done practically. You can see it. And it's crazy what they were able to do. Highly recommend it. Uh, Girdler killed this movie. What do you think about that one? Yeah, it's... It was one of my favorites, and I have, you know, I don't have the fancy slipcase, but yeah, that was in my pile too. But um, I love this movie. Um, I think the cast is like, I mean, just give me every Christopher George movie ever. Um, I'll watch anything that he's in. Oh, thank you. Um, we have, so, okay, side story about Christopher George, since I can't talk about this movie since you already talked about mine. Um, but so John got me the uh, 
Playgirl magazine that Christopher George is nice. was in with the watermelon. Um, and so that he has like the fold out one. And so I got that framed and it's in the kitchen. And um, Charles from Twitch of the Death Nerve was here visiting and he was here for like a week. And it wasn't until day three that he looked up and he was in the kitchen and he finally saw it and he just like could not stop laughing. I was like, you've been here three days <laughs> and you've missed naked Christopher George this entire time. What's wrong with you? Uh, anyway, that was fun. That is amazing. Uh, yeah. Yes, I didn't say that out loud. Leslie Nielsen is also in this. Yeah. Um, and just incredible. Uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend this one. This, this was a really good like party type of movie definitely definitely it plays really well with the crowd for sure it's it's great to like if you're doing it programming a marathon for friends at home or something this is a great one to throw in there yeah it gets weird all right what do you got next uh that was my next one because we had the same z's so you're <laughs> back to you <laughs> i'm back up then uh let me see i i went out of order uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with my most modern one. Then uh, I had to throw this one out here because uh, it got a 4K release recently, and I I wanted to highlight it because it's freaking great. Uh, I love Crawl. Did, did you see Crawl? Did you like Crawl? I did not see it. Didn't that come um, out in the last like five? Yes, ten years? it's a 2019 yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Um, it <laughs> it's pretty good except for the cgi in a couple scenes is pretty shoddy yeah. uh the story's fun uh it's a surprisingly tense movie and to to make a modern like alligator movie this is probably the best way that you're gonna get it it's it's uh definitely up there for one of the better animal attacks movies over the last 20 years yeah um yeah good acting fun movie uh i like it i don't think it needed to be on 4k but uh i like it I mean, I don't think it needed to exist because you know what does is this movie, Alligator. Yes, yes. <laughs> Which is like one of the best animal attack movies of all time. It's a great one. Robert Forrester, Henry Silva. I mean, a kid getting killed in a swimming pool. Like, it's just the ultimate for me. This is like the most mainstream one I have on my list. But I, I adore this movie. I watched it so much when I was a kid. Um, yeah alligator it's the best yet another one on 4k uh screen factory screen factory actually did really great with that release uh they also put out the sequel which is not quite not as good, good as no. the first one it's, you can just not quite as good it's not good you can just say it's it outright bad. it's not good it's bad it's, bad. Yeah. it's terrible <laughs> yes ma'am um yeah it's not good uh but alligator is one that uh th th that's like it's a default everybody should should have alligator in their collection it's totally worth it um, speaking of Scream Factory, uh, I've got, shockingly, two more from them, which I don't even love Scream Factory that much. Um, this one is one that they just released last year as well, and uh, I, I think I pissed a couple people off the last time I asserted this, so I'm going to assert it again just so I dig in. I think The Pack is a better movie than Cujo. Uh, I, I think that a pack of dogs chasing you is much more terrifying than Cujo standing at your car window. Uh, and The Pack did the same scene uh, earlier. Um, yeah, this movie's great. And then on top of that, you, you've got <laughs> Robert Klaus, who also directed Enter the Dragon behind this, which is such a weird connection. And then uh, the big thing, uh, big thing, what, what is uh, his last name? Uh, Jodon Baker. I always want to say, oh, yeah. I always, I always <laughs> want to call him Jodon Briggs, just because it's funny. Um, the pack is great. Jodon Baker is super fun in it. Uh, strongly recommend checking it out if you've never seen it it is earlier than cujo by like five years four years i think it's 77 and it is it's really well made and honestly it was on a dale i think you were here the last time i said that it's better than cujo sorry um <laughs> it is one of those movies that uh it hit close to home back then because there was it's weird to say like back in that day, but especially when I wasn't even alive then, but the, the whole packs of dogs things was much more common then. there was much more uh, of a problem with stuff like that. And the movie does a really good job of uh, explaining it and uh, showing it. So yeah. Have you seen the pack? Uh, it's been a very long time. I need to revisit it, but I remember really liking it. The music's really good in it too. I probably should say that it, it's a very well-made movie. Smithers not over the Stephen King discussion. <laughs> that was like three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got for us next? Uh, so I get I realized 
now my pile has two Jaws knockoffs, but whatever. Like that's what Sweet. so many <laughs> animal attack movies are now. So, um, and this one's not great, but it's just, I have, I can't help it. Like anything that is even remotely Italian by any means, I'm just, I'm all about it. And you know, tentacles. Nice, nice. Unopened. I haven't opened it yet because we just actually, oh, this is a recent pickup. I do have something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, you know, John Houston, Shelley Winters phoning it in. Like it begins with some, you know, a baby in a stroller getting taken out to sea. And so, of course, I, I love it for that. But I mean, yeah, I, I can't defend it to anybody who's like, it's not good. I'm like, I know, but I still like it. <laughs> it, it is a fun movie. Yeah. It, it is certainly worth a watch. I mean, and look, and you got, look at this guy's face. I mean, that's like, <laughs> it's pretty that. bad. The, I love that they put that on the slip. It was not needed to be on the slip. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, funny enough, uh, I I'm just took these out of order. My next one will be a uh, Jaws ripoff as well. Ah. Um, this movie is kind of boring, uh, but this movie scarred the hell out of me when I was a kid. Um, what year did this come out? This was 96 and probably uh, the most, well, Crawl is probably a little more mainstream. But uh, at the time, very big movie mainstream wise, uh, Val Kilmer and Michael Douglas in The Ghost in the Darkness. I really liked this movie when I was a kid and it messed me the hell up. Um, I, I don't, uh, you know, think that it's an amazing movie nowadays, but I think it still really holds up. Um, the whole lion aspect of, of this movie is pretty terrifying. I think they do Michael Douglas a little dirty in the movie because they don't show a damn thing. Like this is one of those things that we're talking about with the sweetest taboo. This is a movie that holds back when it should have crossed a couple lines, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Oh, have you seen that one? Your, your face changed when I held it up. I, I I was trying to remember if I had, and I'm like 90% sure that I saw it when it came out in the theater, actually. Um, but yeah, I haven't revisited it. But yeah, I mean, if it's like, if, if lions are like killing hunters, then I'm all about it. But I know it's not quite that. Not quite, so. but it, it's pretty good. Okay. All right. Last pick. This is my last one. So I originally had this other one on here, the um, but then I remembered that it wasn't actually an animal, so I took it off. But I did want to just shout out William Griffey's Sting of Death because it has a plastic <laughs> bag in lieu of having an actual jellyfish, and it's the greatest <laughs> thing. But it's actually the mon it's actually like a man jellyfish. I don't know, type monster. So it doesn't really count as an animal tax. So I took it off. So I decided like, I'm going to go with one that I love and has one of the greatest child kills um, <clears throat> in the book. And that's prophecy uh. from 1979. Um, John Frankenheimer, killer mutant bear, environmental horror. Um, there's a kid <laughs> Who's in a sleeping bag and the bear just chucks him <laughs> and against a rock. It's fantastic. Not like Jason, like grabbing a sleeping bag and chucking right. a girl. It's it's better than that because it's a child. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I I love this movie so much. Uh, I'm Eureka, still amazed. Whatever. Eureka gave like a beautiful release to that. Oh movie. yeah, hell yeah. I I'm like I'm secretly a little upset that like i didn't have anything to do with this but this is uh, it's before my time so you know yeah that was a little bit of an older release it's you know it's fine but uh this is one that i actually had in my pile because i told you like i haven't been actually watching movies all week i've just been listening to commentaries and so this right. was in my pile so i'm gonna get to the commentary probably tomorrow while i'm continuing to fold boxes and tear bubble wrap <laughs> um I, I love that we're very much on the same page you went with the mutant bear uh my last pick is one that uh i saw some sort of like a free screening when it came out just because they were trying to get butts and seats to be able to say that people were watching it sort of thing mm -hmm. um and uh this is a genetic engineering experiment gone wrong uh and erica may not have seen it because it was 2006 um but uh i i have to go with new zealand's black sheep this movie is <laughs> hilarious and uh so over the top gory and that's why it is so much fun the sheep in this 
are fucking insane and it's literally mutant sheep just going batshit on on humans uh have you seen black sheep please say yes uh no because yeah 2000s and it's a horror comedy so that's like two strikes right there <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it i promise uh black sheep's a hell of a lot of fun yeah it's just not erica's bag but no nope, uh, that, that's hard to be <laughs> yeah oh dark age yeah dark age is fantastic that that child kill is super crunchy it's a good one uh, let's see. Will says, got to give a shout out to them. Best ant movie ever. Uh, Brendan says, speaking of bear child kills, how about that one in Grizzly? Grizzly's oh, he doesn't die. There's like an ADR like line, like a little bit later in the movie. So that's in the book, but it's like saved. It's in a sidebar called saved by a throwaway line. But yeah, that kid, <laughs> like you think that kid's dead. Like you're like that. There's no way that kid's alive, but like there's a scene later where Christopher George, like, you can bear ought to very barely hear him say like, Oh yeah, he'll survive. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> uh, any other honorable mentions you want to shout out that weren't in your pile? Uh, I think Toby, sorry, Toby's chattering <laughs> away back there. Um, there's, there's so many like crocodile ones. Um, like crocodile fury is a great one. There's, there's a scene where this kid is like, does dives off a dock and basically does a swan dive, like straight into the crocodile's mouth. It's fun. Um, yeah. Crocodile fury would be my, my honorable mention. What about you? Uh, I, uh, Let's. I, I could say Grizzly because I, I really enjoy Grizzly as well. Um, yeah. I I do enjoy uh, Cujo, so I, I can say that. Uh, if we're going to be talking about crocodile movies, I I agree with Cam. I think Rogue is one of the better crocodile movies. Um, Razorback, uh, as mentioned by Shane, is probably the one that I wanted to put on here the most, but I felt like it was one that we've all been talking about over the last couple of years because it just got a 4K release and a Screen Factory release. Um, gosh, there's so many random ones uh I, I do want to shout out kino if you've not paid attention they have like quietly put out a lot of these uh especially the made for tv ones they've done really great with those arrows done a handful of them um it's it's i mean we just have so many great releases yeah there's so many that i can name right now black water is probably the best as far as realism because the crocodile actually jumped out of the water Ah, film masters, giant Gila monster and killer shrews. That's yeah. true. Uh, <laughs> how, how dare we not mention Ace Venturi got attacked in the tank? That's true. Willard's good. Arachnophobia, one of my favorites. Yeah. I I worship John Goodman. That's um, one. You know, uh, to bring it back to the book, mm -hmm. I have not asked what's your favorite type of child kill? Not not favorite kill specifically, but favorite like genre of child kills. Kill it with fire. How, uh, how many are there? There's not that are... many, honestly. Right. Um, like that's probably one of the less common ones, but um, uh, I mean, the animal attack ones are probably the most fun um to actually watch but um yeah that's i mean even that the type is hard to pick but i mean i just like to say kill it with fire just because i'm like that's how you you know treat like that's how you kill the villain and that's <laughs> what children are to me so <laughs> uh is there like do you remember the first child kill that you saw that made you fascinated with this uh yeah jaws <laughs> so, made me afraid one. of going in the ocean and i was also i don't think i was like aware of how uh taboo it was to kill a child in yeah. in a film when i watched because i was six years old but when i think back to it you know like that's that's the one where i was like oh wow like anyone can die in the ocean you know yeah. and so um yeah, I think there's probably like the blob is probably another one where, you know, I remember um, seeing it really young and being like, oh, shit, they got the kid. 
Uh, last thing, since, uh, uh, by the way, like this is really rare. Erica doesn't normally go on camera. So no, thank you again like for doing all. this. Um, do you want to highlight what's going on next month so that uh, we got a lot of listeners in LA? Oh, shit. Okay. So um, I will be in Southern California for a week in May. Um, apparently, my nephews are 18 years old and are graduating from high school. I don't, remember the, I don't remember their names, but I'm supposed to be there. So, um, and so I'll be out there for a week and I was able to hook up with, oh, fuck yeah, slugs. Sorry. Just saw that, that comment. You're I love funny. that movie. Um, I, I was able to hook up with uh, Micah Geary from Seed on 16 millimeter. And we're going to be doing a screening at the Frida cinema of a, it hasn't been posted to their calendar yet, so I don't want to say the name of the title in case it does have to change. But what the plan is to do a screening in association um, with the book. That's going to be Tuesday, May 21st. Um, and then I actually just talked to someone today about um, unassociated with the book. Um, but he told me I could bring copies of the book, but it's I don't, I don't know if it makes sense to do that, but um, about a screening of Deep in the Heart in Dallas. And he asked me to oh. come and talk after the, after the film. Um, so I'm going to go up there and, and talk about uh, Deep in the Heart, AKA Handgun um, in Dallas on June 8th. And um, you can follow me on Instagram and I'll post details about that when, when I have more, um, I guess I might have books with me. I'll definitely have books with me in California. I'm, I've already mailed out a couple boxes to um, to my sister. Nice. And um, and then I'm um, also talking to um, someone up in Philadelphia. Haunt Love and I are working on getting a screening together up there. Um, so I'm also saving a couple boxes of books to take up um, for that, but that's not probably going to be until August. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then not to, not to like drive in FOMO or anything like this, but this is all independent and Erica doesn't have a ton of books. So if you want the book, buy it sooner than later. Um, there was, it was only a thousand that you went for, right? That's all, all I could afford. Well, I couldn't even right. afford to print a thousand, but I printed a thousand. And so, yeah, um, I am not trying to create FOMO either. But um, they are all, uh, there are a thousand copies, they're all numbered, and I'm, a third of them are gone already um, before we started here. Uh, it's at a micro cinema in Dallas. Hold, please, I can get you the name of it. It is, uh, 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 oops, ah. I don't know how to internet. Hold, please. Uh, Brendan wants to know, are they all signed and numbered? Yes, they are all signed and numbered. It's going to be worth thousands of dollars when Erica's printed her they 17th are not. book. <laughs> uh, Spacey? Micro Cinema in Dallas? 1300 Polk Street? is where it's going to be sorry I, this literally just came up this afternoon so i don't have like i'm i'm sorry yeah there you go um <laughs> but uh yes yeah, so signed numbered um all that good stuff and i wish i would have thought of that like ahead of time because then i would have had like a page like printed and you know right write, write the number so i ended up putting stickers on them that are signed but you know they're also inspected by uh peter bark so <laughs> Sure. So everyone knows, like, if there's an issue with the book, you don't talk to me about it. Send a message to Peter Bark. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, this has been super fun and super rare. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions for Erica or anything else you want to hype up before we sign out for the night? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, listen to the podcast. I've got, uh, yeah, What the Peeper Saw has got a great ending. It's a great movie. It's really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but the ending's fantastic. And, um, oh, cool. Stan might be at the Frida. Thanks. 
Yeah, he was just saying he went there to see the Giver recently. Sick. Okay. Hope to see you at uh, Say Hi if you end up going to the Spacey, Shane. Um, no, I don't really have anything to hype. I can't announce any upcoming... I have I have a video essay that I put together for an upcoming Vinegar Syndrome release that I'm really excited about. Well, I didn't put the video essay together. I just wrote and recorded it. Um, but I'm really excited for that. And I think a lot of people are going to be excited and maybe a little confused when that release is announced. So I'm excited for, um, for that to come out. I think that should be in the next couple months. Might be May 1st. Probably not May 1st. We'll see. Probably not. I think only one Vinegar Syndrome title is getting announced because they're saving everything else for the sale. Oh, yeah, not May 1st, but like the month of May. Sorry. but uh, Yeah, speaking of that, uh, Vinegar Syndrome is announcing that, uh, uh, what is the name of it? The one that they produced last year. It's the next VSP. Um, Riddle of Fire. That's the one getting announced on May 1st. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, yeah, semi-early night tonight because Erica doesn't like being on camera, so I, I sped through it to make her feel better. <laughs> Um, we, we do have a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, the newest issue of the physical media advocate is launching, um, either this weekend or Monday, depending on when we finalize a couple things. And, uh, we got more retail partners to announce next week. It's going to be available in more and more places. So, uh, check those out, support those. Just like Erica was talking about the book. It means a lot to show those places that you're willing to buy it from them. So they continue supporting creators that you hopefully enjoy. So, uh, check those out. Check out the Patreon. Check out Unsung Whores. Uh, Ronnie's saying, do we know when the Halfway to Black Friday sale is? Yes. Uh, we know that it is going to be, pulling up my calendar, sorry. It is always uh, Memorial Day weekend, so it will be live uh, the 23rd, May 23rd through May 27th. Uh, we'll go live Thursday night into Friday uh, of that week. Speaking of my girl, how about Bridge to Terabithia? Yeah, that's it's in the book, but it's in the appendix. I didn't do a write up on it. Thanks, Kubrick lover. Uh, yeah, lots to talk about next week. And uh, next week is the first, so Will will be back. We got Screen Factory announcements, Arrow announcements, all kinds of stuff to talk about. Thanks everybody for hanging out. And uh, uh, Turd Ferguson's posting in the Discord. Where do we go to buy Erica's book? It we talked about it nineteen times. Go check out the Big Cartel site, please. The sweetest taboo book dot dot com. Thanks everybody for hanging out. We'll see you next week. Thank you for watching the Disconnected. On the way out, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've liked the video, and that you've copied the link to be able to share it with someone else that may appreciate this.